one of the first um, concepts I think it's important to understand from this position uh, for the top and the bottom player is where the top person's weight is distributed. Like right now I have my weight in both of my feet, but if my left knee is down and all my weight is here, uh, his side is really, really light. So if a professor wants to build up his base and start getting up to his elbow, there's nothing really stopping him, okay? So if you reverse engineer this and go in the other direction, if I start to put all my weight on this side and make that side light, it starts to break the position for him, okay? So the pass we're gonna learn is a slow pass. This isn't like a really quick back step that's gonna take one second and then you either pass or you create chaos in the position. Uh, this pass is kind of like, like an investment. Like you need to put time into it, make sure they don't rock you out of it. And then after one minute, a minute and a half, it starts to break the position down and you get a really good position out of it. Okay, so that's like the mindset you should have here, okay? So uh, the first thing we're gonna do is kill both tools he has to make us light on his side and kick us away, okay? So that's the foot on the ribs here, kicking us away. And it's also the bottom leg extending us away here, like this, okay? So as soon as we get in the position, we're gonna grab on his feet and we're gonna just take the foot off. We're not gonna throw it behind us but because we don't wanna encourage him to bring it underneath and start extending it in X guard, okay? So we're just taking it off and then we're stepping our leg close and closing this leg against his body. So we're doing like this and my legs are really, really pinched and I'm just moving this leg out of the way and I'm grabbing his collar. And then with this hand, I'm gonna grab his hips and I'm gonna think about moving my hips from on top of him to a little bit further down to where it's like beside him, okay? Because this is gonna allow me to, to uh, pass the position but also it's gonna make it harder for him to grab my collar and rock me and then recover everything we just kind of took away from him. Okay, so you don't want to be teetering right on top. You want to clear the leg, grab the grips. We're not really pulling ourselves in. We're more pushing to kind of avoid that collar from pulling us in or, or from making our hands post and, and, and recovering the position. Okay, let's rotate this way. So as soon as we get in the fish position, take the foot off of the hip so he doesn't start rocking you away. Start closing your leg. Control the collar. Control the a grip on the hip. And now watch my feet. Like my foot is really close to his body. I start working with my toes. Look how it just inches. Here. And now I'm gonna switch my base and go for the side smash. Here. Okay? My feet didn't move. I just, you can see right here, Professor. I just did this. So I put my weight in my heels off of my toes. Like that. Here. Okay. Walk back. And now here. Okay, just like this. All right. So once we get into this position, it becomes like a game of side smash. Okay, so it's just a game of me putting his knee down in front of my body and then me uh, draping my head over so he can't pull his knee back out. Okay, and there's a few ways I can do this. I can work like we do with the hand in the collar, closing his leg down and then bringing my body over top. I can grab with my far arm and bring it in front or I can just push with my hand here. But as soon as I bring it in front of my, my body, I'm going to create like a like a bridge. So it's gonna be my knee on his thigh, all the way over, and it's gonna be my head on the floor. Okay, so I'm not gonna put it in front and then stay here, because I give Professor a frame here to start making me light and pushing me down, and then maybe using his elbow to escape and pulling himself out from under me, okay? So as soon as I get this leg in front, I'm going forward and I'm putting my head on the floor, like this, okay? Once we get there, all the normal side smash rules apply. You have to distribute your weight really far on his knee so he doesn't open and rock you <coughs> like this. Boom. Okay. You should keep your head low like we just did, but also our grip behind his back, if we rotate, 
is going to stop his hips from coming up and stop him from going to, to turtle. So if I grip really high here, it looks good, but there's nothing on his hips. So he can just turn into me here. And now he starts rolling through and attacking my legs or just escaping the position. So I like to grip his hip and I'm always feeling this connection and pushing his hips down and adjusting if I feel him starting to come up, okay? So if he starts to bring his hips up, I'm like pushing my weight back onto his hips and I'm pushing down with my hand here, okay? One more time. So as soon as we get in the position, I kind of turn my body because it exposes his foot like this. Rather than being here and trying to get it off, it catches. But if I just go here, now I can take it off and I start to step this leg close. And I can feel my thigh is fighting his leg's ability to, to extend me away. So I'm like working here, like with power. I'm not just kind of stepping, okay? Here, controlling. Oops, sorry. Right here on the hip, right here on the collar, walking my hips down off of his hips, and then switching my base. And now I can start to smash however I want, okay? Pulling down, pushing down, using my forearm. One grip I, I use a lot is controlling his arm, like I would the collar, and then working with my forearm anyway, okay? Because I like the fact that it pulls him off of his back. So it makes it harder for him to open his leg if he's on his side. Okay, and then collapse my stomach, put my head on the floor, and we're just gonna stop in this position. Okay, um, what are your questions about uh, what I showed you? Okay. Yes? Scoot underneath, yeah. You don't want to pull yourself in. You kind of want to push away. Uh, so if I'm here and I start getting low, he's, he's going to grab my collar and he's going to try to make me post. And he's going to put my weight over top of him. So to fight this, I need to grab these grips and start getting my hips off of his hips and I'm pushing into him here like this. I'm not really pulling and going forward. I'm kind of retreating halfway out of the, the single leg X until it's a side smash, rather than going all the way back to open guard, you know? Because his leg is between my legs. I'm just not in a position here to side smash it. But once I start to move my hips back, back, now it's in the perfect position for me to switch my knees. So your arms are working to push, and you'll feel when your partner tries to pull you and make you off balance, you're gonna have to push away from him. Like I'm pushing into his chest and I'm pushing his hip, okay? This is how I defend against the, the rock. And expecting it, like you know single leg X, you'll start to feel when the person is gonna try to reset you. you. You know what I mean? You can feel they know the position's getting bad. He puts his hand in your collar. There's only one thing he's gonna do next. He's gonna rock you. So you get ready and you push. And then once that's done, you start settling even more, okay? Any other questions? You guys need to see it again or you guys want to try it? Look, one more time? Okay, one more time. Just like that, okay? Start off just drilling with no resistance. Talk to your partner and say, try to rock me here. Like, start to get some, like, active like practice, okay? Let's go, one, two, three. Okay, so just a couple of things. <laughs> I saw a couple of details maybe to help you guys out. Um, the first thing, especially if you have long legs like me and it's hard for you to bend your knees and get low and like create pressure without being like this tall, stilt person like hovering over them, th this is gonna be a really important concept for you. So uh, when my feet are really close to his body, I can't, I can't bend my knees in an effective way. I just do like a squat, like I sit. Like if I don't step my feet back, I have to do this, okay? So part of the trick is getting your feet farther and farther and farther away from his body so that your shin, like this is your foot, this is your knee, as you go back, your shins start to become parallel to the floor and then they start to feel your pressure rather than just space, okay? So one of the things I like to do when I'm turning away and I start to 
lean my body into him is I put my weight in my knee and I make my foot light and watch my foot like it, it moves away from his body. So look, there. And now when I come down, there's a lot of pressure. Like see my shin is, is parallel to the floor and it's gonna like give me a head start in creating pressure, okay? If I just don't move my foot at all and I just take the foot off the hip, I, I'm kind of like squatting, like I'm falling back. I'm not heavy on him, okay? So you can do that at this point, move your toes back. And also you do it at this point too. Like I start to, you see how my foot is like walk, like I'm walking, I'm just sliding it and then it goes back. Sliding it and then it goes back. And so my knees are almost directly on the ground. I'm really, really low, but I'm a tall guy. So like it's, I'm still mobile, but I'm low. Okay. And now I can start to side smash from here and switch my base. Okay. Um, so just a couple of things in here. Um, if you take the foot off and you throw it and they start to put their foot underneath, um, you can always high step from here. Uh, but you made a mistake in that you threw his foot. So you made it go down there. Just take it off. And then as you start to get lower and lower, the space for him to put his foot to X is not there. Try to put your foot into, there, there's no space here. So now I can start to work without him using that hook. So it seems like, like a really small detail, but you really don't wanna do this before you've gotten low because you're just gonna put him into a different guard, okay? Um, and then the last thing, when they underhook, when they start to feel pressure in the single leg X, they'll underhook here, okay? Um, a couple of things you can do to prevent this, if you can come back one step, Professor. Usually when they're here, they won't underhook until you start to get heavy. But when they do underhook, if I can, close my, my hand here and create like, like his, he's gonna bring my, my leg up in this path. So if I can grab this grip and push down against my own leg, I can kind of slow it down while I'm trying to walk back and maybe switch my hips before he picks my leg up. But if he does bring my leg up like this, I don't like to pass to this side. Um, I like to pass uh, over the head, okay? So I'll still, I'm just showing you this like a quick glance. Um, I'll still take the leg off of the, the hip, control the collar, and then I'll start to point my toes and I'm pushing my weight into my leg and I'll switch this grip right here along his shin and I start to hop around until I can block his knee from coming back in. So now I'm in kind of an awkward position where my weight is in my leg, but I'm past his guard. So like he's gonna start scrambling and I'm gonna drop my weight and come to the other side. I'm making him lose the position, you know? So this is kind of how I think about when they underhook. This is what I like to do, okay? So we're in the side smash now. We're just gonna uh, go over the, the concepts for the side smash, controlling the side smash, passing uh, one more time, um, and then we're gonna do some specific training, okay? So once I get in the side smash, I'm bringing my head down. I can pass my knee through like a knee cut, or I can use my knee and collect both of his legs. It's your preference. But if you pass your knee through and you don't control his hips and he's able to turtle, he can't attack your legs here. Okay. The pass we're gonna do is just straight over, all right? So I have my head next to his head. I'm controlling the tricep. Um, all I need to do is bring my head up and then sprawl my hips down and I'm using this leg to pull my hips to the other side of his body. And then I use my toes to walk my hips and roll him up onto his side, okay? And then I can start to hug the head and square myself up, okay? So I'm just pushing my body down here and my hips are passing over and staying as low to the mat as I can. And then I'm walking myself up with my toes, okay? Knee goes through, I'm here, I, I have the underhook, I have the belt, I start to bring my head up and slide my hips down here. And then I make sure I don't leave any space for his knee to come in, yeah? I just keep my hips low to the ground and roll them back up, keeping the triceps up and controlling the head, okay? Super simple finish. There's a lot of good finishes from, from the side smash. You can go to mount. Um, you can pass windshield wiper, um, 
It's a really controlling position, uh, but this is a pass that, that I need to use more. It's just very simple and, and just going you know, straight to side control right over the legs without any windshield wiper work, okay? Um, what are your questions for this? Yes? While doing the pass slide, uh, could you bypass putting the knee in there and just go straight as you're going straight to side control? I'm yeah, about. you can. Um, I, I, like to, I like to have my knee in the middle because I use my knee in the middle to push his bottom leg down. So like that bottom leg is what's gonna recover guard most of the time, right? So if his knee is to his chest like this and I slide over, I can still pass, but that bottom knee is a tool, okay? So the closer it is to my hips, the more he's gonna be able to use that tool to recover. It's the same as if you, if you long step. Like if I long step, boom. This is the leg that's probably going to recover. So controlling this leg and picking it up is going to be a really good option. Anytime you're trying to pass. We learned right here to go right here and use this bottom leg. So just get it out of the way. So as soon as I side smash and I decide to put my, my knee through the middle, I actively work to push his leg down like this. Like I'm just pushing off of the ground with my top leg and making his bottom leg straight. And now I can drop my hips and his bottom leg is way down there, out of the way, okay? You can, you can do it the other way. It's not wrong, it's just this is the reason I like to do it this way. I just feel like safer without that bottom leg so close. Okay, good question. All right, any other questions? Okay, so let's practice this for a bit. Um, and then uh, as you get more comfortable, start to attack like back take submissions, improve position make it more like open drilling at that point, and then we're gonna do some specific training, okay? Let's go, one, two, three.